Hello class, welcome to this tutorial video to help you get through the robotic vacuum work on style as well as the where's the wall activity work. So both of these lessons are very similar. So I'm going to go through the robotic vacuum one first and what we go through will help you with the where's the wall activity and I'll explain exactly what I want. So what I will do first, I will go through the three levels that are here on the VEX VR worksheet. Now remember all the work that you do, you're going to be doing on VEX code IQ so that you can program your robot to do this. Um, so I'm going to just go through the robotic vacuum first and then we're going to move on to VEX code. So here it says at level one um, what it wants us to do. So uh, program the robot to move like a robotic vacuum. Use the distance sensing blocks to program the VR robot to turn or drive in reverse when it senses the walls of the playground. It should move around and sense all four walls of the playground. So instead of completing this on VEX code VR, you'll do it on VEX code IQ and you'll put the robot in the arena, which is in the classroom. So if we move over to VEX code IQ, um, before we start, we just want to make sure that all our devices are uh, inputted. So remember, we go up in the top right and with these three white, white squares, we pick the middle one and have a look. Now for this, I have only added in the drivetrain, which includes the left motor, the right motor and the gyro um, and the distance, which is in slot two, because this is all we need for this work. So once we check that all that is there, um, we move on to what we need to add. So there are three crucial things that you need to add into this code. The first one is if we go into the left where it says control, you will see one which is towards the bottom. Um, it is first and fourth from the bottom. It is this one, the wait until block. The next one we wanna grab is in the operators, the green section, and it's in the middle. It's this one, which is, it says blank, and then it has less than 50. The third one is in the sensing. If we just scroll up a bit, it should just be here at the bottom which is this one, it says distance two, distance in millimeters. Now, to make sure that all this comes up, remember, we need to have all our devices connected. Now, why do we need these three? Well, let me tell you. So, basically, when we add these three codes together into one, when we put it into the robot, whatever we write in our code, that is telling the robot what to do. So, let's say that it is driving forward. Um, so for the start, we will put that it is driving forward. We can put this block in here. So the wait until block, the robot will continue driving until it's something specific happens. So in this case, it is going to be that when it detects an object, that's what we wanna try to do. So as you can see, this green one here, it is hexagonal, which means it can fit in here next to the wait until. So what we do is we pick it up, we line up the left side of the code. And as you can see at the wait until, it has started to glow, which means it will slot in. We then take the distance two block and we put it into the left blank space. We do the same, take the left side of it, hover over where the blank space is. It should glow and slot in. So at the moment, the code is telling us that it is going to drive forward um, until it detects an object. So that's the first part of the code. That'll make your robot move and detect an object. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna make it do either reverse or turn. So what I'm going to do is uh, I will make it reverse. So we take our drive forward block for 200 millimeters and we can change it to reverse. And then I'm going to change the number and let's put it at 100. Just only a small distance. From there, it can turn. So for this, I will make it and put turn right to 90 degrees. I'm going to say let's turn it um, 130 or 20. Let's say 120 because if we think of a, um, the position it's facing, it's facing one wall. We want it to turn enough so that it'll face another wall but it can't just be 90 degrees because then it'll just go along the walls. We want it to kind of 
roll around within the space. So if we do 120, that'll still angle it to the wall on the right, but it'll go in a different pattern as it goes around. So we have this, however, once it turns right, it's just gonna stop. So what do we do? Well, we repeat it. Instead of copying and pasting everything, we go back to our control and we can add a repeat or forever. So for this, let's just put forever. So if I slot it at the top, it'll encase everything. So what is happening now is once it gets to the bottom, it'll restart and it'll start to drive forward again and continuously go around in a loop. Now, you might have some trouble with it sensing. If there is any trouble, the first thing I suggest is increasing this number because it is only gonna stop when it is less than 50 millimeters, which is only five centimeters, which isn't very long. So I suggest the, easy, the safest number is 100. That's what I've been using to make it work, and that's what it works with. So if we have a look here, we have completed the code. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna grab our robot. So I've got my robot here. We have the cable here. Now, if you need these cables, they are in the, in the room, in the back tall cabinet. It'll be on one of the top shelves. There'll be a bag. Just grab it from there and make sure you put it back once you're done. So what we do is we grab it. We make sure our robot is on as well before we plug it in. Otherwise, it won't sense it. It won't pick it up. Now, I'm going to plug it in. Okay, I have to update it, so give me one moment. Okay, so it is updated, as we can see up the top in the right, uh, where it says brain, it's green, which means it is connected. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna download it, and we press download, it should come up. Now it's downloaded. So now what we wanna do is we wanna trial it, put it on the ground, um, and if there's any problems with it, you just have a look, see if you can fix anything. If it still doesn't work, you can email me or we can discuss it in class to see if we can fix it. But that is the first part of the robot vacuum. For level two and three, it is, you're gonna do the same thing. Um, however, you're gonna add an extra block. Uh, now, what we wanna do is level three, I'll talk about level three first. So it asks us to use random blocks to change how the, v, the robot turns. So what you're gonna do is, if we go back to the operators, you'll see uh, one here that says pick random one to 10. So what we can do here is, if we grab it, we can slot it in, same thing like we did before. The left side, we hover over the space and we slot it in. Now, what we can do is we can pick, it'll generate a random number in the robot to turn. So in this case, I'm going to say anywhere between 10 and let's say 120 degrees. So every time it detects a wall, it'll reverse and then it'll either turn right between 10 degrees or 120 degrees. Uh, and then it'll just keep going around and around. And that is what you have to do for level three. Um, now I'd ask you to do stuff with a pen, don't worry about that. So that is all you have to do for the robotic vacuum. That last bit of the robotic vacuum will be okay for what you do in the Where's the Wall activity. Now, as you can see here, this code is from another program called Robot Mesh, which uh, we are not going to be using for this um, we are not using, we're using Vexcode IQ instead. Now, um, as you can see, there are little things that are different, um, but there are certain things that you might see that are similar. For example, it starts with driving forward. Uh, when it senses an obstacle, it'll reverse, it'll turn right, and then it'll keep repeating. Um, so I am happy for you to play around with the codes from the robot vacuum task. Um, and make sure that at the end of the where's the wall activity, it asks you to submit your code and annotate it. Um, now, 
just like we did with the annotations for some of the prior work, you're going to comment on what each of the sections of the code does. So it shouldn't be much different to this. It'll only be maybe longer, maybe shorter, depending on what you make it do once it detects something and restarts. It can show different codes, it's up to you, but that's what you have to do here. And then that is done for the robotic vacuum and where's the wall activity. Um, so I hope that this has helped you. If you do need any help, you let me know um, and you work as a team to figure it out. But I hope that you were able to uh, do this and it was clearer for you. So good luck, all the best, and I can't wait to see what you're able to do.